Well, iFixit did their famous teardowns on two really interesting products. And what's interesting about these two products together is that one of them, which is called the Fairphone, got a perfect score on um, upgradability. I, I guess uh, repairability is what they call it. And the other one, the Apple Pencil, got a failing grade. <laughs> so they, we got the whole spectrum in these two products. iFixit CEO Kyle Weens joins us right now to talk about these two teardowns. Welcome to the show, Kyle. Hey, Mike. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Thank you for coming on. Now, can you tell us about the Fairphone? What is the Fairphone? And uh, what did you discover? What did your team discover when you guys did this teardown? Yeah, so the Fairphone is a startup out of Amsterdam. And there are a bunch of folks that said, hey, what if we had a phone where we actually traced all the materials of the phone back to the source and sourced things in an ethical manner? And they released Fairphone 1, which was a uh, ODM reference design. It wasn't a particularly interesting phone from a mechanical perspective, but they sourced everything ethically. That was their first version. And then for Fairphone 2, they said, okay, now we're going to actually design a phone like we think an ethical phone would be designed, which is something that's, that's very straightforward, easy to take apart. Super durable, but then when it inevitably breaks, uh, very straightforward and easy to fix. And it's a really impressive design. Uh, I have never seen a product that was really this well thought out from a product lifecycle perspective. It says design to open right on the side and you can pull it apart. You can get most of the way into it without any tools. Uh, like you can swap the display in about 10 seconds without any tools. And display is, is wow. you know, cracking the screen is one of the most common uh, things that people break. So it's obviously, it's really easy to tear down and repair. How easy is it to actually source um, materials if you needed to do a repair? Like say you do need to replace the, the display. How common is the sort of glass that they're using and uh, that, you know, would, would it be something that someone would easily be able to find someplace so that they could, they could do a swap? Yeah, so Fairphone is selling parts directly. They're also working with us to sell parts. So this is a Europe only phone right now. So the, the distribution of the parts is only in Europe, which is fine. Uh, and they're making the parts uh, reasonably affordable. They're not trying to make a ton of money off of the service parts. One interesting thing about phones in general is that it doesn't really matter what phone it is. The, the parts are going to be specific to that phone. Uh, if, sure. it's, if it's a Moto X, you need a headphone jack for a Moto X. No headphone jack for any other phone that's going to work. So Fairphone has to be the one selling the parts, but they're committing to doing that and supporting the phone for a number of years. Uh, Kyle, do you have any opinion about the Fairphone as a phone? Is it fast? Is it is it enjoyable to use? What what do you what do you know about the phone itself? Yes, so this is a great question. I haven't used it yet. <laughs> we only <laughs> took it apart. <laughs> so right. I've I've taken it apart a few times, but I haven't had a chance to actually use use the final one. So I couldn't tell you. I I'm hearing good things, but uh, I I don't know. Okay, so let's talk about the Apple Pencil, which uh, if this was a you know a school would have gotten an F. Uh, on your teardown. What makes the Apple Pencil so unrepairable? Yeah, so this is kind of reminiscent of the iPod Shuffle design a little bit. So this is this is the pencil. Uh, and in order to get into it, we had to use a Dremel and cut all the way. <gasps> wow. That's uh, amazing. So, so we've got this very long cut. And inside it, so in, nestled inside the plastic is this metal sheath. Uh, and this is steel. It's it's pretty darn rigid. I think they were trying to avoid a bend gate situation with the uh, pencil. So this this whole thing is assembled by sliding this cartridge into the inside of the uh, of this. So they're they're assembling it kind of like a you know a big long cylinder. It's interesting. I've seen this type of mechanical design in one other place in the world, and that is in oil rig drilling. They <laughs> they they use these really sophisticated sensors, and they're in a tube that's about you know three inches in diameter and three to five feet long and they run it all the way down into the oil drill. And so they have to design everything to work inside of a cylinder. And so you end up with these really weird circuit board designs. Like this is the main PCB uh, for it. And you can see it folds open. So it's, it's wow. actually like there's four sides and two boards, and then it folds together to fit inside of this weird you know, cylinder shape. So this is all, all and then here's, here's the battery, of course, which is also a cylinder. So everything about this was how can we pack as much electronics into a cylinder that's kind of the right, the right shape. Uh, and so as a result of, you know, sliding everything in and then using glue in the process, it's just not physically possible to pull this apart without uh, damaging it. 
I mean, in, in fairness, I mean, it would seem to me it's a, it's a hundred dollar item. I mean, I, you, you could maybe make the bat, make the argument that you would want to replace the battery. Although, given the number of, of cycles it says it can use, the the iPad Pro that you would use it with would probably be obsolete first. Um, do you think that that I mean, obviously it's ridiculous you had to use a Dremel to get into this thing, but th this is really kind of one of those items that is kind of designed to be disposable. That if it breaks, you buy a new one. Yeah, and I think that's reasonable. One one point, uh, it didn't get a zero, which is the lowest score, and that's because it does have one modular replaceable part, which is the tip. Yes. Yeah, because it comes <laughs> so with an extra one. It comes with an extra tip, and this is the tip. And and so that just screws on it. It's kind of funny because this is one of the only times I've seen Apple use a screw <laughs> that's like publicly accessible. The tip is screws on. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's a fair point. I'm not super concerned about repairability of this thing. We rate the repairability of everything we take apart, so we figured we'd give it a repair score. But we're not sure. saying don't go buy an Apple Pencil because of the poor repair score. However, uh, Apple is not making any uh, provisions for recycling these things. And you can't uh, run this thing straight into a shredder because it, it's a safety hazard. You have to separate the battery from everything else at recycling time. Uh, and they don't. There's there's no recycling instructions that Apple's making available for this thing. In contrast, I have the iPad Pro here. So this is this is the inside of it, and I've got the the display. So the display is glued on. Um, but then once you get the display off, we've been really frustrated with iPad designs over the years because the batteries have been glued into the iPad. And I've actually this battery is upside down right now. Uh, and what you'll see on previous iPad batteries, there's huge amounts of glue that make the iPads basically unrecyclable. Recyclers don't know what to do with these things. On this one, they redesigned it and they have these adhesive strips here that come off very easily. Uh, and so this is, we, we were calling this in our, in our uh, announcement that this is the first iPad that we think is possible to recycle safely. So Apple is understanding what the recycling problem is on the iPad Pro and then in the pencil, they're not. Interesting. Well, I mean, you know, and it's they've had many uh, uh, iterations on the iPad to figure sure. this out. Hopefully future Apple pencils will be more repairable, more recyclable, et cetera. Uh, and Kyle, I want to thank you for all the work you guys do in bringing uh, to light uh, the whole issue of repairability. And I, I love the fact that you also uh, uh, talked about the and, and tore down uh, the uh, Fairphone because it's very difficult. You know, everybody talks about uh, ethics and the environment uh, right. around electronics, but nobody does anything about it. When when I or most people go and buy a phone, we want the fast thing, we want the, the thing that's going to run the best apps. We have all these criteria that are more important to us than repairability, than the ethics of, of how the... Uh, parts are recycled and so on. So it's great that you uh, and your team are bringing uh, this whole issue to everybody's attention. Kyle Weens is at kyleweens.contently.com and also you can find him and all the teardowns at ifixit.com. Kyle's at kweens on Twitter. Kyle, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank hey, thanks Kyle. for having me. All right, bye-bye.